Hi, and welcome to another Arc Daily interview. Knowing that no one builds on their own and that shaping the built environment calls for close collaboration between all involved actors, Arc Daily has launched an initiative that recognizes and highlights the top collaborators responsible for delivering the best architecture out there. Focusing on the professionals involved in the projects, this strategy seeks to help our community find the right collaborator for its next architecture venture. And in order to increase their presence on uh, our platform, ArcDaily will put in the spotlight their expertise uh, and actually the expertise and the contributions of the engineers, consultants, designers, and contractors involved in our creative selection of published projects. In a series of interviews, we will discover more the process of cooperation between professionals uh, and architects, discussing in depth some of their projects. Hi, Steven, and hi, Hervé, and welcome again to this ArcDaily interview. So our conversation will tackle in general your collaboration before focusing on three culture projects the Institute for Contemporary Art at VCU, the Winter Visual Arts Building, and the Nancy N. Rich uh, Kinder Museum. So how are you both? Great, good. Very well, very well. We are, uh, we are in the, uh, I am in New York. Stephen I'm in Rhinebeck. In the yeah. In my archive building. And I wanna tell the story of how, how we met in the first place. I had just won the competition in Helsinki for the Kiasma Museum, 1994. And there was a kind of, uh, there was a, a celebratory dinner and I was sitting next to Vie uh, Roja, the very heavy Finnish building manager that was gonna run this museum that we had just won. And they looked at all the beautiful drawings and he turned to me at the dinner and he said, I don't know how you're gonna make light in those galleries without light fixtures. Because I had made all the gallery drawings in watercolor and all the light came from unseen sources that lit the entire gallery spaces in sequence. Tula Archeo, who was the director, really loved it. It's one of the reasons we won the competition. And he, and he said, if you can't do it, I want to have your wife. And I had my ex-wife sitting next to me. And I said, yes, okay, I'll do it, we'll do it. So then I really had five good deal. <laughs> I should have given him <laughs> Janet. But anyway, we should have filed in the lighting, okay? Would that be the better? She's still part? a friend. She's still a friend. She's divorced, but she's still a friend. But anyway, so I then I I, I remembered visiting the Picasso Museum in Paris, which had this concept of light in the galleries from unseen sources. And I brought and, and then my friend uh, Wayne Berg, bless his soul, brought in. Hervé to meet me and right away we started to collaborate but he had trouble because the people in Finland they thought they knew a better story and Hervé can you tell the story about I mean, and, we and, had... and, and, and actually I just moved to New York like uh, like two years before that I moved in 93 and uh, I always tried to collaborate with Stephen and he was like the impossible man to meet okay so very challenging it was like uh, uh, the wall of China in the front it was impossible. And because of when connection with uh, university, with Columbia, we got, we got in contact and then uh, 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 it was uh, uh, the, the perfect encounter, by the way, okay? I always admire Stephen's work, admire the way he was thinking about lighting before doing the lighting. And he, you know, it's uh, a, a great reflection and uh, uh, a great way of proceeding. And uh, uh, when I uh, when invite me to uh, the first meeting, uh, we flew together to uh, Helsinki, and uh, it, it was uh, it was very interesting because we went to uh, it was uh, late November, I think, when I went the first time, and uh, it was fairly dark. And uh, when we arrived to the engineer's office, they had uh, it was a very dark room with a candle in the middle of the of the table with about like seven, eight people around that candle say like, wow, it's gonna be promising. Uh, a very interesting uh, uh, way of, uh, uh, of having, I, I think it was very welcoming, okay? So it was nice. Except when, uh, when the uh, uh, mechanical engineer revealed his strategy of how to light the gallery with uh, 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 mounting a, a lot of mirror on the ceiling, it looked like uh, it was a palace in, uh, uh, like a palace in uh, in Las Vegas. Okay, you had like all these great uh, uh, 
pocket of, uh, of light with mirror, all mirror on the, on, on the ceiling to reflect the light. And I, and I like, uh, what that the mirror for is to look at the art in a certain way, or it's really because it's not very useful for the lighting. We don't need those mirrors. And it's gonna create like tons of shadow that we don't need. So we, we, we are like, uh, uh, I would say, a cultural uh, 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 dispute about uh, using or not using mirror on ceilings. Okay. The and, only uh, the only the only solution was to build a giant mock-up of how this light would really work. And Hervé knew how to do it. And I had the light coming, the natural light coming from the same source, the same sources as the artificial light. And together we worked out the whole thing. Yeah. And then we built a. Ha a a very big piece of the building. I, it was built to half scale um, uh, mock-up and it was uh, on the outskirts of Helsinki. And my, my old friend Zaha Hadid, bless her soul, was in town. She said, Stevie Wonder, I wanna see your building mock-up. I said, well, it's, and then they took her out there. And because it was half scale, the doors were like half size and she had to stoop down to go in and she complained about that. But anyway, in the, in the mock-up, we proved this light strategy. He was work. working with very no mirror. beautiful. It was very absolutely beautiful. beautiful. So yeah. very, very beautiful. And for the last little touch on the story, we call all those space where we had uh, uh, when we hide the light, we call them uh, pockets of light. And uh, and and one when, when like really before the like uh, the construction was on and. We were very rushing and one space was, uh, it was kind of too dark and we were missing light. And I said like, let's, uh, let's add a pocket. And Steven said, no, all the pocket have been picked. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's do something else. <laughs> right. That was your first collaboration together, right? Yeah. Yes. Big pocket. Yes. And how does your process look like? You like know, how I is your work? Well, no, one time someone asked me what was my favorite material as an architect, and I said light, because it's a spiritual material. And therefore, you know, I mean, in, in a certain way, Vitruvius, you know, said architecture is about firmness, commodity, and delight. And I say architecture is about light, space, and form, because, you know, my philosophy is based in phenomenology. So the experiential dimension of architecture you know, is the most important dimension. And, you know, uh, Michael Blackwood did a film when the museum opened in Helsinki called The Body in Space. I think, Hervé, you're in that film, yeah. right? If yeah, I am, I am. He's I in am. that film, right. Yeah. And so, I mean, this is a deeper, this is a deeper thing than just a, a friendship because we're philosophically working in the same belief. And, uh, I'm, you know, I, 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 I think, it's very exciting because I know he can, you know, he can help me achieve these dimensions because it's a challenge and it's different in every project, you know. We were just at the Franklin and Marshall Winter Arts Building, which had a, an opening ceremony it was very beautiful, incredible fall day with the colors. And this is a very radical building floating like a kite in the trees. Yeah. And it's, it's a conceptual strategy was based on the diameters of those trees. So that takes its concave and convex geometry from these tree drip lines. And it was a building that had a very tight budget. And, you know, so, but, you know, a couple of ideas like the box kite structure, like a, it's built like a box kite. So we use the whole depth of the building uh, as the steel frame and the steel frame is exposed. But when it comes to the lighting, it had to enhance. I mean, this is a place for studying of art. Um, and it, it has to enhance all the spaces, but it can't be, you know, it can't be too expensive. And Hervé did, I think, I mean, I think it's one of our our great recent projects. And uh, Hervé, do you want to talk about how? Yeah, I, I, I think also uh, um, the way we work, we like, there's no, I think, when we have a, a very modest budget, there is no room for uh, decorative elements. Everything has to work both ways, has to be 
absolutely beautiful for architecture, but also has to be totally functional. You know, when you do a classroom, you know, the, the way we did, like I use all the, is the glass that uh, Stephen had to bring the daylight. I used all those glass as a reflector for light for night. So it happened that the, the building get like beautiful illuminated at night and really also enhance the surrounding and bring the safety around the building, but also it's totally useful for the inside of the class because right. it brings like the light level that the student need to work. So it was, it's always finding the right way of using a design to be also, you know, uh, 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 useful as a, as a resource. For example, in Houston for the, the kinder building, the question was, how is this gonna look at night? And I, I said to Hervé, you know, this is a very sensitive problem. You know, we have to light this building is gonna kind of glow at night, but not too, not too much, you know, and so, I mean, you want to tell the story how you work yeah, that out? Yeah, like, uh, I, well, you know, the, the, the building is right in the center of the city. Okay, It's in a very residential neighborhood. So uh, we had to be extremely sensitive of not becoming the, the most intrusive element and building in the in a, in a old neighborhood. Otherwise, it would have be a, like, uh, 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 a very like a wrong message. If if all the glass would become a light source at night, it would be a wrong message for the community and wrong message for architecture as well. So what we did, we really carefully pick up the glow which was emitting from the relationship between the gallery and the glass and not try to unify everything. We say like, we have a facade, which is behind, like you had the, the facade of glass, which is unified and doing the day is beautiful because you see a, a unified element to connect everything together as a facade. But at night, I didn't want to repeat what we were seeing during the day. Say so maybe it's interesting to see what is behind that facade and use the glow of only the cut of what we have behind the facade because behind this glass facade, you had windows, you had a, a, a opening to the gallery, to staircase, to different elements. And I think it was very interesting to not try to unify it, but reveal by soft glow. So you're, you're, you're at night, your facade become a composition of little bit blur composition of what was the real, you know, uh, 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 what were the, the real opening. So I think it was like, and, and very sensitive to the, the, the neighborhood and the surrounding. How much does it impact the interior space? The lighting uh, when, of the interior space? No, when, when, the, uh, when the light is very close to the facade, we graze it. And there's only a, like so little spill mm. going inside. You know, I, 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 I did it. I, I experienced it on the facade of the uh, Alice Tully Hall uh, extension uh, uh, here in New York. To ask you like, how flexible do you need the other party to be? Like Stephen, how, how flexible are you in that sense also? And Hervé, how not, much flexibility? I, I never compromise. I'm not, I'm not flexible. Okay. I never compromise. But, you know, we, we battle it out, you know, and then we find a solution. And it's not a compromise solution, but it's a solution, you know, yeah. to the concept. And <laughs> it's always possible. We never, we never start a project thinking that, that, you know, this is impossible. People say that every time. They say, oh, this is impossible. But we, 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 do, we know that it's possible because light, like, you know, it's magic, you know, it's a magic element. And it's very, very important to the spirit of architectural space. We took it much further in two yeah. projects, the Chapel of St. Ignatius and also Sarfati Strat in Amsterdam is based on uh, Morton Feldman's pattern, Patterns in a Chromatic Field, a piece of music. And it's all about this reflected color. 
and Hervé had a big struggle. You, can you want to tell about that, Hervé? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, like, uh, in, in order to fulfill the, the, the spirit of reflecting light, to create color, I absolutely didn't want to use any color light. I wanted the light to be white and be bounced on the color surface. So we had to create like a deeper space every time to create like those, those, uh, those positions where I could like really use, add like my white light, regular light, but because it was balanced, bounce, bounce from a color surface, the light would become color itself. Speaking of challenges, actually, I wanted to ask you about uh, the lighting concept uh, at the Institute for Contemporary Art at VCU. Like, how did you manage actually to create a concept that would be aligned with the flexibility of the program? Because the galleries can be divided into different spaces, etc. So, how did you manage to do that with like different uh, dispositions? I would say. Uh, uh, for us, I did like uh, uh, I had like two clear uh, system of light for the gallery because the, you say very flexible. And the great thing is in each gallery or each of those space, there is an enormous skylight. And I I use that skylight only not the new the skylight is only for the the day, but it's also used at night. This is my source of light. The general lighting come from the same place. And then we have uh, uh, another system for accent light for, you know, but, you know, I use the architectural element, which is in position. So when they, this, when they divide the space, they have to take all the consideration that the daytime with the skylight. So they go around the skylight. So they go around also the uh, artificial light. So it's, it, it works because we combine. And Stephen, like, uh, do you want to add anything about the Institute for Contemporary Art? Because I always wanted to ask you, why did you decide to use these translucent glass facades also there? Like how much did that impact always like the interior light? Well, the, the concept is the idea of forking time and the idea that there's no grand narrative in art today. You know, there was in the abstract expressionist time, even in the 70s, uh, in early 80s, conceptual art was a kind of grand narrative, but now it splits. So you have painting, Bryce Martin continues, great painter, you have sculpture, you know, you have, uh, there. there's a kind of splitting off. So I, I said, let's make this all happen across a plane. We call it the plane of the present. And that's all translucent light. And I think it's only 19% transmission of light. It's a very soft glow. Mm. But that also is the a position in the middle of the building. You know, there's the, the front kind of part of it and then the forking time part. So this, this plane of the present is a very important, you know, conceptual moment in the building, but also brings the light into the top gallery and it also glows at night. And in a certain time of day, the, the, the uh, Rheinzink merges with the color of this sandblasted glass. So you, it almost reads as a kind of monolithic element. So it's a, it's a rather magical uh, uh, to experience. Would you like to add anything more before we finish our conversation? I wanna just uh, end by, uh, by the belief in the power and the meaning of light. We're just I looking forward to the next project. I think- Exactly, uh, you know, exactly. Thank you for both of you. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.